Hey, 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 welcome to day 17 of the Get Up and Go Challenge. Sharon Horton Hellstrom here. And today we're going to talk about service, <laughs> serving. Have you ever been to the DMV and you get a little number or a little tab or anywhere else and you wait in line and you wait for them to call your number? Well, that's what I was feeling like this morning. And I'm thinking, there are so many things like that that aren't going on right now during this, um, this uh, incredible time in our history, this bizarre pandemic, right? I, I don't know if I've ever even used or heard the word pandemic before this uh, occurrence and this is what's going on. I'm, I'm pretty sure I maybe had read it somewhere, but I don't think I'd ever said it out loud. And now I, I probably say it every other day we talk about the pandemic and what's going on in our world. Now, today I want to talk about service and who you serve. Number one, the most important aspect of this whole topic is who do you want to serve? Now, this is one of those <laughs> topics that we hear about a lot, but as human beings, me included, we tend to push back on it and believe that we serve everyone. This is one of the biggest mistakes you can make in not only your business, but in your life. If your relationships are to serve everyone, you're probably not serving anyone to the best of your ability, right? Uh, we need to have priorities in who we want to work with, who we want to serve, what we want to do, what we want to provide. So once we decide what we love to do, what we want to do, the type of problems and things that we can solve and what our capabilities and our skills and our area of expertise is, the very next thing we need to decide is <laughs> who do we want to work with? Who do we want to solve problems for? If you've ever been in a relationship with the wrong person or had customers that you didn't love or even like, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, I've been in both those situations. <laughs> I've had partners I didn't like. I've had uh, an ex-husband that I didn't really like sometimes and I've been in businesses where I've been serving groups of people and people individuals that I didn't like very much that that didn't resonate with me but when I say I didn't like very much meaning I didn't feel good helping and serving and coaching and guiding them or, or selling them my products and services and, and not just coaching but just even you know in retail businesses sometimes we attract a clientele that isn't our ideal clients isn't people that we really want to work with and it's kind of up to us to to filter out and attract the people we want to be with that we want to work with we want to serve we want to help solve problems for we want to be a part of our business and then also repel and filter out those people that we do not really love to serve in my Italian food manufacturing business of like 35 years, we had a customer for many, many years, like 20 some years, that was, for a lot of those years, our best customer. And they were purchased by another organization and the culture and dealing with them changed dramatically almost overnight to the point where they became our worst customer. And as an organization, they cost us the most time, the most money, the most energy, the most they caused us the most problems as a company delivering to them. And although they were our customer, <clears throat> they went from being an awesome customer, our favorite and somebody that we love to work with, to somebody that every day we knew we were gonna have a problem with and what was the problem gonna be today and we had to solve it. And at some point, and it took me a long time to get there because they represented about 80% of our sales at the time, I needed to let them go. I needed to fire that customer. Um, one of the hardest business decisions I've ever made in my life. Um, but what happened after letting them go and uh, understanding and finally learning that we can't help everybody, we don't want to help everybody all the time, uh, everything changed for our business. Our business exploded because all of the time and energy and negativity that that one customer was creating for our organization immediately was released. And all of our energy and positivity and resources were now open and available to serve other people and in about a 60-day period we more than doubled the loss of that business that they represented um, to the to the business and so that was a huge lesson that I learned in you can suffer and deal with people you don't like because you make some money or you can deal with people you love and you can make a whole lot more money because you're adding more value and money is just an exchange of value so that was my own personal lesson in dealing with people that I love to serve, I love to deal with, I love to work with. So how do you do that? How do you know who you want to work with, who you want to serve? 
where you sit down and you do a little exercise, uh, and there's lots of different names for it, the ideal client. The ideal client, the best customer, your favorite customer, your dream customer. There's all kinds of, of tools and things. And if you want a tool for doing that, ask me and I'll get you a link to a couple of my favorite tools. I've got a couple that I really, really like for finding out and really identifying who your ideal client or your ideal customer is. And <clears throat> I won't do it today probably unless people ask. Um, I'll come up with a sheet, a worksheet. I've got the last two days I want to create a worksheet for too because I think it's nice to have all the questions available and to be able to go through and answer them. Um, and I'll keep this up and make it available over the long term so people can go back and do the worksheets if they want. But I want to do one for at least the last couple of days. And then for today too, I'll, I'll find a sheet. I'll find a one sheet, my favorite one sheet. I've got a one that I like that I use now. After you go through this exercise once or twice, you get to the point where you can do it a short form of it. You don't have to go through all of the research and all the, the trials and tribulations to figure out who it is that you want to serve. But now is a good time when everything has changed to say, okay, this is where I was before. And remember, whether you have a business or not, if you're an employee, you have customers and you're serving them too. If you're in a department or a division in a corporation and you hate the, the next department in the chain and in the process and you hate serving those people now is the time to look at what else is possible what else could I be doing who else where else could I be working I did that when I when I first started in corporate America I started out on the manufacturing track and I wanted to go to and get experience in the marketing track because I knew someday I wanted to have my own company and I wanted to have, learn, have actual practical experience not just book experience in theoretical experience in both manufacturing and marketing and in the organization I was with very big you know billion dollar company that was not allowed you could not switch from one professional track to the next that and I believe me creative me tried all kinds of ways of making that happen and it wasn't gonna happen and so I knew that I was gonna have to do something different and that's when I started to switch industries and switch companies in my career which is a great thing I, I mean most people think that's bad but I met a bunch of the people that I used to work with at that company camping 25 years later and because of the career path I took um, versus the one they took people that I started working with at that company they were making about 25 30 percent more than they were when they started at the organization I was making quadruple what we were any of them and what any of us were making um, just in one just in my corporate job at the time so that was a, another big lesson that I learned is sometimes you have to switch who you're serving and where you're serving people and change up your own environment so <coughs> excuse me we need to ask ourselves who is it that we like working with if you're in business already and you've got customers all you have to do is think about who is your favorite customer and then what do you like about him or her um, I did that for the longest time. I had a favorite customer named Kim in the Italian food business. And so everything I was going to do, everything I thought about, everything I considered doing in that business, I ran it through. I, I would actually ask her or I would ask, what would Kim think of this? What do I think Kim would think of this? How would she react to this? And that was really, really powerful for making decisions in that business. And what I want to encourage you to do today is do the same thing. I want you to think of, if you're in corporate America, think of, Remember, your boss is your is your customer too, right? You have customers both both sides of the aisle usually. So your boss is your customer, and so are the people in the next department that you serve, or the people that report to you. They're actually your customers, right? As a leader, your the people you lead are your customers. So how are you serving them? So they might be your ideal customers. So who's your ideal employee, right? Who's your ideal team member? And our action item for today is to describe that person now if, if it's a real person don't you don't have to give their name but you can make up a name for them so we're just gonna all assume that it's a made-up name and <clears throat> although Kim is a real person and I love her um, you don't have to use a person's real name right you can you can have a name for them if you and then use a few words to describe that person to give us an idea of who they are I mean is it a business owner is um, he or she a parent are they um, religious you know are they educated da, 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 da. and just give us a snapshot of your ideal perfect the one perfect customer in the whole wide world for you the one person that you would do anything for and love to work with whether they paid you or not 
that is your ideal customer. That's your dream customer. And the person that you don't want to just solve one problem for, you're like, I want to make sure that their life works and that it's better. So after we solve this problem for them, I know that there's going to be another one and we're going to solve the next problem for them. That is how you want to feel about your ideal customer is that you want to keep adding value and service to their life just because you want their life to be better because you love and adore them. That's how you want your ideal customers to be. So if you want more information about this, hit me up. I've done several trainings on it. I've got access to incredible resources about identifying your ideal customer. Or guess what? You could Google it. If you've never done this exercise before, be proactive. Google it and look for your own resources and the ones that you resonate with. Because maybe the ones I love aren't the ones that you love. <clears throat> Again, who do you want to work with? Who do you want to serve? Who do you want to help? Who do you want to give value to? Who do you want to solve problems for? Because uh, it's a lot easier to solve problems for people that you love and care about than people that you don't. It's a lot more fun to create happy experiences for your family members, those people you love and care about, than it is your next door neighbor who you can't stand, right? Have you ever had a neighbor that you just can't stand um, because you clash in, in values or, or whatever, for whatever reason? Well, how much do you want to add value to their life versus people you love and care about that are in your family? Uh, so that's it. Share in the comments below the name. I want you to name this person or give them a name. And I want you to, if you can find a picture or a girl, create a picture of them or a drawing or whatever, just do something to move toward identifying your perfect customer. That's it. Have an awesome day and I'll of course see you tomorrow. Get up, go, go do this right now. Bye.